my guest is my blood brother, Maxwell Lendo Roach of Newland, North Carolina. <coughs> I have uh, known Max in spirit for a long time, even before I met him in the flesh. And he's a drummer, and I'm a drummer, and therefore, of all the Afro-American musicians who play Afro-American music, he is, he is closer to me than anybody else because he does the same things that I, I do. He swears, he curses, he, he screws, he does everything that I do. We are actually blood brothers. <coughs> uh, He's quite, without doubt, a giant in the field of Afro-American music and uh, a terrific exponent of the Afro-American style of drumming. Um, he has worked with a lot of the Big Brothers in the world of Afro-American music, such as Davey, Brother Miles, Prince Charles, and a whole lot of them. And as a jazz student, I have always wanted to corner Maxwell one day and talk to him and ask him questions that are of historical importance to me as a researcher and as an African uh, musician. And so about, when did you show up, Maxwell? When did you show up in town? Uh, two weeks from today. Two weeks today. Two weeks today. Exactly, two weeks, yes. Today is Saturday, isn't it? It's Saturday, and uh, I arrived Sunday I used to go day C ten. Not a part of uh, July it was. And uh, got in Sunday night and it was at your place on mm -hmm. Monday. Mm -hmm. Purpose of my trip was to come here to see you, of mm -hmm. course. Mm -hmm. and, uh, well the whole thing is yes, 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 yes. The whole <laughs> thing has been uh, for me a big ball because it's wonderful to have somebody who can talk your language, feel the way you feel. It's always beautiful to have somebody alongside of you. Nobody's a loner in this world. Anybody who tells you that he's alone in this world is actually goofing off. You have somebody, uh, something who could be a piece of stone, something to make you wholesome with the elements. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it makes me feel good to hear you say that. Because mm -hmm. <clears throat> so many people here in our, in our crowd who are admirers of yours seem to feel as though that you have, uh, that you've been living a monkish life, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a fallacy, you know. I don't. So it's I good to hear you say that. Mm -hmm. The thing is, uh, I, I need nourishment just like any artist needs nourishment. Who takes his art? Serious. And the nourishment cannot come from living in deflation. You know, it's not mm -hmm. from being with nature and with the people and the birds and the bees and all that. So I do that, but I don't do that flamboyantly. Like many people don't know about this. They think I live like the hermit, like you say. Like that's their blues. has nothing to do with it. But anyway, uh, today Maxwell is going back to New York and to his family and to his work. And what pleases me most about Maxwell as of today is the fact that he is doing less playing of gigs per se, jobs, one night here, two nights there, and he is concentrating on the history of the music he plays and its affinity to Africa. And uh, it's also a beautiful thought to know that along this line uh, we have come to to be very close to each other. Uh, 
and it makes me very happy because one of my li lifetime campaigns has always been to get Maxwell, who is to be the number one. I'm not shitting, I will shit on him. Number one Afro American uh, drummer in the field of Afro American music. He that is never bored me. He's always been melod melodic, if anything, as, as opposed to other drummers who excite me for a few seconds and let me down. But I've always campaigned to get Maxwell to uh, come back to roots, to the origins of his music, and to see what we could see in the way of finding out things and asking questions and looking in and experiencing. I remember suggesting this to Yard when I met him, but unfortunately he couldn't make the trip. So this, to me, is a historic trip. And I want to take this opportunity to ask him a whole lot of questions. Maybe this session will take an hour, two hours. But he's very kindly consented to ask questions. And so I will go right ahead and find the first question. Maxwell, why drums? Why drums? <clears throat> you know, in, in, in the States, time I grew up, it was during the Depression, and we were people from the South, North Carolina, farmers, in fact. And my father and mother had come to the city, big city, New York City, to improve their lot as a family. They brought two children, myself and my brother. They Is brought that brother? He's dead. Oh, he's dead. And they both uh, worked very hard during the day, doing whatever work they could do, meaning you know, my father was trying to learn, and he did, in fact, develop uh, some automobile mechanical skills. But we were always left in the church. The church was the focal point of our community. And uh, during the days, these churches, which also, I guess we would say, they they act like um, daycare centers for families who work. But we had this organized many, many years ago, daycare centers. And in these daycare centers, this church was the uh, physical plant. And uh, they had arts and crafts and music. Mm -hmm. My first instrument was uh, piano. Yes, I told you so. My second instrument was trumpet. And uh, my mother 